Good morning, folks. After last night, I do not really want to discuss the weather, but let's go around the globe quickly. Cresting low brought huge waves to Portugal, more severe weather across the continent. There's enough deep red spread out here to ask you to keep watch on your local forecasts. The Earth top flood zone right now in western China, north of Tibet. It is very severe. To the east, Vietnam needs to prepare for yet another storm. Disproportionate number of storm occurrences here, don't you think? Same with Pacific versus the Atlantic, where yet another low is being cannibalized by the big American low. You see the moisture brought northeast of top Mexico and along the convergence line. The rain started at lunch. By dinner, the winds kept me inside. Lightning spooked my pups when the sun went down and sirens went off at 1.30. Huddled in the basement with my wife and dogs for a bit. Just glad it's over couple articles and video posted. First, to plan to go beneath the Greenland ice sheet even more than we have before. Video link below. Also, for those who remember the GOES R, this is about the primary observation instrument going on that first craft, which will launch in 2016. I've also linked my original coverage of the spacecraft below as it's probably necessary for context. Ice on shot of the day is a real color image on Bruce Gary's site, which is linked every day for you below. Color confirmation comes from Austria with the world-famous amateur astronomer Michael Jaeger. Taking a walk outside pre-sunrise, you might as well try to see ice on. Now the search function on Stellarium is very useful. Type in the full name of any celestial object and you zip right there. Now let me also zip ahead a little bit to where we get some color in the morning sky. You can also use the date and time function to see where this comet will appear from Earth's perspective at any time, or you could use the JPL orbital diagram, also linked for you below, so you can see our solar system in 3D, planets, and the comet. ISON is about to take its dive towards the sun and is passing Earth's January 15th position as you hear my voice right now. GOES shows our sun is not completely flatlined, but the uptick we've been witnessing has seemed weaker the last day. I stand by the lone delta spots remaining on the Earth-facing disk. They gave us a C6 flare, but that's about all, trailing in the umbral group on the south. You may not have noticed while looking at Saturn and Mercury coming in on the left to conjoin our star. In fact, it wasn't until a commenter pointed out the sun diver that I saw it myself. Nice one there. This will probably be dead by lunch. The solar wind finally showing a bigger CME impact. The speed finally ramped up to 500 kilometers per second. It was just of only moderate density and caused only weak signatures of geomagnetic distress. Coronal holes have only moderate power, but the incoming opening is more equatorial than they've been for a week or so. We've also seen S1 not fully capture the breadth of these openings, so perhaps this sometimes underrepresents the solar wind expulsion. Got the holes bigger CME and the planets hugging together. That's why we had our quake watch rolling. Most know about the 6.3 in Taiwan yesterday and literally 30 minutes after the evening news last night, we took a 6.6 .6 in Chile. Lockheed Martin kept its promise to deliver level two functionality to us by November. Must admit, this is not exactly intuitive. I've linked the explanation page for you to learn. We'll get it eventually. The tools have been handed over. Their Iris Today page is a bit confusing, might not be finished yet. Got some shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.55 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.